Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to expand the layout and see if we can make it just a little bit more interesting. As you can see, I've already rearranged the existing track pieces in the general shape that I want. And then I've also collected a few more pieces of track to fill in the gaps and finish it all up. I also got another variation track set from Kato. This is the V3 track set, which is a proper rail yard with three switches, but we'll get into that later in the video. And then I also got some more train cars to test out on the layout. This is a four car passenger set of some Japanese coaches that I found should work well with the D51 that I have. Now, this isn't the exact train that the D51-200 would run with, but it should be similar enough to play the part. And with all that being said, I think we should go ahead and start adding the track pieces to the layout. And something interesting that I should mention is with this crossover right here. Um, it's just a single crossover, so um, I mean, you can obviously see that. But for some reason, it's about the same price as the double crossover that I have. However, it looks a lot nicer and you can actually uh, change where the power is directed or whether anything gets any power at all. So by default, everything is powered, um, but you can change it so that certain things are not powered. So here we have some metal frogs, if it'll focus. Yeah, we have metal frogs, which can be powered or you can turn them off. The switching parts of the track, I don't know what to actually call them. They are actually two separate rails that are independent from each other, which is unlike any other switches I've seen from Kato in N-Scale. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that the single crossover is the same length as just a regular long piece of track. So it's kind of hard to get it in there, but you can see unlike the double crossover, they are the same length. This is one interesting piece of track. You can change the length of it, and it's completely variable between 78 and 108 millimeters. Its primary use is for filling in gaps where a standard piece of track wouldn't fit. And while we're here, I just wanted to take a moment to say that only 3% of my viewers are actually subscribed. So make sure to click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any more of my content. It's free and it only takes a short amount of your time.
Now with that all in place, let's go ahead and take a look at the Variation 3 track set. This particular box has some windows on the front that show us some of the special pieces that come with the track set. Taking a look at the back shows us how the set is supposed to go together and also multiple different ways to combine the track with other track sets. And yeah, it is just the generic green box design that comes with most of Kato's track sets, which is perfect in this case. And we'll go ahead and take a quick inventory of all the pieces here. So what we have on this far left corner are these straight pieces with bumpers on the end. So this is a 62 millimeter straight and the bumper is actually removable. So you can use it as a normal 62 millimeter straight piece except for the rail joiner doesn't have an electrical connection. So you'll have to switch things around if you wanna uh, kinda change where this all goes. And we get three of those in this set. Of course, we have the three levers that control the switches, which we have one right hand switch and two of these left hand switches right here. And then we have three of these curves, which are meant to uh, straighten out once they come off of the switch. We have two of these 64 millimeter straights. And then we have a whole bunch of these long straights and these sort of little bit shorter straights. And it will go right in this gap right here. And there it is all set up and put together with the layout. I wasn't able to fit the whole set within my layout. I had to leave out just one piece 
Um, it was like the medium size piece, but I got most of it in there. It, it's kind of different from the way you're supposed to set it up, but yeah, it looks pretty nice in there. I did decide to set up the electrical system with the switches, and I've also done that over here with these switches and that crossover. Um, these new crossovers that I got don't have any levers that come with them, so they're just gonna have to be switched manually um, for the time being. And I think what I'll do now is I'll use the, I'm gonna be using the D51 to test out the whole layout. Um, and I was going to test out the uh, rail yard before testing out the whole thing and unboxing the passenger cars, but I think I'll just unbox the passenger cars right now, and then we'll go ahead and test the entire layout after that. And this will be the very last thing that we will unbox for this video, so let's get right into it. Uh, on the front here, we have some windows that show us a sneak peek of some of the models. Um, they each have their own number label, and I apologize for the glare here. I'll move it so you can see the picture. It looks like some of the cars might have some tail lights that will light up when they're on the track, which looks very nice. Um, the back shows us some more products. So we have some locomotives, and I think that's another passenger car. It also so shows us some track sets and a nice picture right here of somebody's layout. Very, very nice. There's not much else to see on the box. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot left on the box to look at. I think it opens from the top here, so let's go ahead and open that up. Then we have this plastic piece, plastic film. And there's all four of them right there. We'll go ahead and take them out one at a time and just look at them. There it is. Sorry if it goes out of focus sometimes. Yeah, let's look at the other side. Yeah, that's pretty nicely detailed. We have the bottom of the car here. And I've seen this before on some other videos with other models. There's a switch right there. Oh gosh. There's a switch right there that we can switch for the lights. I think this is a lighted car. Um, yeah, there's the pickups there. Um, there's one end. The doorway and a window. There's another end. It's another doorway. The rest of the cars are very similar. I think these two are just the same. This one might be a little bit different, so we'll just go ahead and look at one of these ones. Yeah, the only difference is the road number. So, yeah, we'll just look at this one. That one has an open doorway. There's the other side. And another open doorway. This one does not have the switch, but it does have pickups. So, well, let's see. It doesn't look like we have lights on the front and back of this one either. So, yeah, I don't know if this will have interior lighting or if that's just if that's just supposed to have a consistent design with the other cars i think this one's the same as that one so we'll take a look at this one which is another car that i think also has lights I'll just go ahead and take a quick peek because it's pretty much the same as all the other ones yeah, it looks like we have lights there. Yeah. And the other side, 
It's a closed doorway. Yeah, there's a switch there on the bottom. Nice undercarriage detail. And then, yeah, this one also has pickups. Let's see, does this one also have pickups? Yeah, it looks like it. I'm curious to see how the other cars that don't have the uh, rear red lights, uh, why they have the pickups, I wonder. I don't know if I worded that very well. But there's one more piece as I drop one of the cars. I am no professional, you guys know that. But this piece looks like a flathead screwdriver. This is meant to actually flip the switch on the bottom. And what this does is to turn off the lights. So I think that's on and yeah, that's the off position. So I think we're gonna have to, we're gonna want them on. Okay, and then let me see if there's anything else that comes with the box before we move on. Now we get a little slip of paper right here, which I can't read any of it. This is all in Japanese characters. And it also looks like we have a certain order to put this all in, so... The darker rectangles are the cars that come in the set, and each one has a number. So, well, this is supposed to be a locomotive right here, and then behind the locomotive, this is the order they go in. So I think I'll just put the four cars in that order and connect it to the D51 that way. So yeah, let's go ahead and get these ready to go on the track. Something I just noticed when I was preparing these for the layout, the passenger cars actually have different colored rooftops. So this is the end car right here. It has a lighter gray on the roof than the rest of them. Um, I also forgot to go over the roof detail when I unboxed it. So yeah, each car is slightly different on their roof detail. I don't know what those things are on the top, so I'm not even gonna try and call them names. Anyway, yeah, we should be ready to go now. I have the D51 out of shot, so I'll start bringing it in right now. Um, let's go ahead and test the V3 just by coupling up to these passenger cars and we'll also test out the electrical function of the switches. Why is it not going? Oh my gosh. There we go. And it should all be set for it to go to the middle one, which is the front car. And I am going to have to intervene to have them couple because they won't do it automatically. So let me just do that really quick. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's come back forward and we'll go ahead and take the two middle cars. And it seems to be working just fine right now. So we're gonna have to come all the way out and switch this other one. So we'll go ahead and do that. There we go. We're gonna back up. These ones should couple automatically, so I shouldn't have to intervene. Let's see if that worked. Yep, got them. And we're gonna have to come 
all the way out again and switch both of these switches so that, that one and that one let's go ahead and back up to that last car Oh, didn't couple that first time. There we go. Smash it into the barrier. All right, we got our full four car consist, which actually looks pretty large. Yeah, that looks like a very entertaining train. Anyway, let's go ahead and switch this back. Switch that one back and I will pick up the camera and show you guys the rest of the layout. Watch it take a full lap around the inner loop. So hopefully we'll be able to see that. Yep, those are the rear lights, which are actually very bright. I'm glad those are working. And I don't know if any of the other cars have interior lighting, so I'm not sure about the whole pickup situation. Anyway, we're going to go for another lap, apparently, because I forgot to switch it. I'm going to use this piece of wood to flip the switches. Um, so we're going to flip that crossover and go into the second line. So, all right, there's that. And we'll watch it cross over and we'll watch it take a full lap around the middle line and that has worked out well so we'll switch it back uh oh hold on well that's a bit awkward well there's the d51 for the first lap now it's taking its second lap so it actually did make it around successfully. So here, we'll just watch it and see how it does. There's the adjustable pieces over there. At first I was skeptical about it because it made the rails kind of thin around there, but it seems to work out just fine with no problems at all and I forgot to switch that again so we'll watch it go around again or here I'll just switch it with the stick let's see if I can do it with the stick there we go yep there it is and we're gonna go ahead and test the outer layout no, not the outer layout, the outer line. Excuse me. So it'll come around and go over this crossover. There we go, now we can switch it back and watch it go around. Not sure if those rear lights are working anymore. I didn't see them, so I'm getting kind of anxious. Let's see if we can catch a glimpse of them right now. Oh, yeah, they're still working. Just not paying attention. Yep. So, yeah, there's the outer line, and, yeah, it all works just fine. No problems. Uh, let's see if we can switch it back to the middle line. So we'll... Then we'll watch me struggle here. There we go. That's all switched. Wait for it to come around again. Because I want to test the other crossover as well. So... Here it comes again. Oh, and 
Just in case you were wondering, I do have all three controllers at the same speed, same direction turned on right now. It stopped. That is strange. Give me a minute. All right, turns out it was a problem with that crossover. I think I just had to make sure it was switched all the way. But yeah, it's doing fine now. I'm back on the middle line and I'll switch it back. So this crossover works just fine. Watch me struggle again. All right. There it is on the middle line. Again. And just for fun, we will test the double crossover again. So we'll see it come the other way across the crossover and we'll be back at the inside line. Here it come. There we go.
Hey, this is me from the future. I ended up revising the track a little bit. This set of curves right here used to be directly connected together, but then I put a straight in between them. I also put a straight over there. Um, I had to rearrange a whole bunch of different pieces, like the V3 is a little bit different because I took pieces from that. I switched a bunch of pieces around. Anyway, uh, the diesel locomotive right there, the F unit, wasn't very happy about that, about those curves being connected together in an S bend. So I put a straight in there just to help it uh, run a little bit better over that part. So we'll go ahead and test it out, see if it's okay with that. And this is a slower speed than it was running at. Should probably make it go faster, but it's already at the curve. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, it's having a problem there. Hold on. Oh, it's going now. Hold on. Let me get it faster. Watch it go around again. And while that's coming around, we might as well get this one running too, just because... And we'll watch the D51 go over it. Which, the D51 didn't really have any problems, but its wheel arrangement is a little bit different from a diesel locomotive, so... I'll go ahead and see. Yeah, that that vintage Atlas diesel locomotive does not run very well. I don't take it out very often. I don't know if I need to do something to it to help it run better, but it really just has problems. Hey, we'll just switch out the diesel locomotive and have a different a different F unit the F7 I only have two F units why am I saying it like that all right set that to the side yeah we'll just have this one on the inner line where there's no power let's get that one going Yeah, well, just wanted to show you guys that I did a little revising. Why is it slowing down so much? Do I just have bad track?